Hello, my name is The Demolisher13, and today I have fulfilled a request of a certain user. Sally, I do not remember his name at the moment. But anyways, the request was basically create to create a memory system in the in the game where you can store in basically any value you want and then have a search engine that can find any value you want so long as it's in your system. Now, without a further ado, let's get to it. So, I have created three blueprints. You, first is memory cell one. And how this is going to work is, you're going to build the first one. This holds ten values. And then if you want anything more, you're going to build memory cell two. And do not build memory cell one anymore unless you're starting a new uh, memory cell unit. And the best bit is you can link these together and they automatically adjust for each other. And then if we want to search for a value, let's just get three of these down and then get a search engine down. Before we begin our search, let us first type up a random value. So for this I need to get some wiring out. So we want to write a value to cell block 2. So first keep this turned off, cell block 2. Then we want to go into cell I don't know, uh, 9. So 9, and then we want to write a value of, I don't know, let's do J13. So we write our value. Then I turn that off. And then, then to check to see if J13 is in the system, we put an R in, so here we go. Turn it on and look at that, J13, along with a bunch of other values, but you still get to have your J13, which you can filter out. So, what if I have like 30 different values in here and I'm looking for a specific one? Well, we have the search engine here. So, the search engine has a few uh, combinators that you have to pay attention to. So we have the start combinator, and then you p type in whatever you're looking for here, and then the reset. So if we we're looking for J13, I would type up J13, and again we type up J. 13. And then make sure this is turned off. And then this one we turn on. And then we can just see it going through every cell. And if everything works as intended, it stopped. And look at that, J13. Uh, now, if you want to figure out how to automate whatever you're searching, be my guess. This took me ages, so... Well, actually, this whole project only took me about five hours. But as you can tell, making the search engine... It's a bit of a rat's nest in here. I don't recommend trying to tear the thing apart. As to what does what... Uh, well, this is an R memory cell, and this is an R memory cell. This one counts cells, this one counts uh, cell blocks. And they both are hooked up to timers and counters that tick them up till they eventually uh, find what they're looking for, and then this goes to another memory cell, which then outputs what we're looking for. 
and to clear to clear the search box we first want to uh, turn off the search because the search automatically turns itself off or pauses itself once uh, we get a value output of what we're looking for then we will turn our reset on which clears the search and then we turn that off and we're ready to go again now if we end up looking for some a value that doesn't exist for example j14 and then store a search we will get a value of n as a no value And we should get there right about, no. Yep. Search stopped when it, when it searched every single cell, it, cell block and still didn't find the um, correct value that we were looking for. So, and it means no value. Now, in the next bit, I am going to show you what values, or what, um, signals are not to be used as in uh, well actually here let me you don't use B or if you use B you're using that to check between cell blocks you use C to check for cells yeah. use R to read a cell use W to write a cell and then you use um, what was it D to reset a cell. Now, oh, and then you also use L to lock a cell. Furthermore, you do not use the blue signal. The reason being, blue signal is used for um, counting cell blocks, so each cell block will uh, automatically adjust itself. So B will it will let the signal through if B equals green, but then green is accounted from the blue. It, it gets a bit complicated. Um, but to show you to reset cell so-and-so, well actually, let's see. I showed you how to write it, and I showed you how to read it. So let's start with locking cell to be 9C. So we are supposedly locked. Let's just read to make sure it's there. Still there. Now if I wanted to write to it another integer like i, and we try. So we're trying. Now let's try to read it again. Read. Turn you on. Okay, I guess I was a bit off. I does work. And if you also pay attention, uh, I guess this is a exa good example. Um, w is now a 2 rather than a 1. So that means if I want to add an R J, or yeah, let's just add an R J. And right j and then we want to read it we add it 1j so what ends up happening is if it's a one tick pulse or if it's a continuous pulse uh, I know this isn't the right memory so it will always add one tick pulse equivalent of that uh, value you're trying to input to prevent it from uh, stacking then when the value is read it comes to this one which then gets times by three and then comes back and divided by three to give you the exact answer you had uh, I'm not sure why the locking mechanism isn't working so it was cell block 2, cell 9. So here's 2, 9. 
Oh, it should have worked. Oh, I think I know why. So, W, L. Okay, so. So, we're at cell block. There's our L output. Okay, so now if I try to read that, Okay, so the L value is in there, and we want to add to J. So let's try to write to make J bigger to J15, for example. So we just try to write to J again to make it bigger, and if we read it, J is still 14, because the cell is locked. A better example would be me trying to add a I or add another value like E. So try to add and now we read there is no E value. Now to unlock a cell you just simply reset it. So you would uh, type up a D. All right. Now let's go read it. And there is no longer anything stored in that cell. It is now a blank cell. And the only reason why we're getting R back is because we're t sending out one R. Um, so yeah, let me just give you a quick rundown of all the signals you should not be using as it could screw the system up. Read, write, delete, lock. And so you don't want to use your blocks. You don't want to use C our cells. You don't want to use the read command. T is well, T is used for this timer, and you don't want to mess that one up. Uh, because if you put in 2T, it will disarm or a T value of greater than 1. It screws the timer up, and your value won't be stored. Um, w is what you used to write. I guess you can kind of throw that one in. D is what you used to delete. L is what you use to lock a cell, and blue is what you use to determine what cell block is what number. And the best part about that part is I can infinitely uh, add more cell blocks, and it automatically figures out what number it should be. And the best bit is the system itself powers itself, so it's all nice and contained. So if this is cell block 3, because of the green is 3, then this should be cell block 4, and the green is 4. So 4, and then 5. We're going to store up as many values as you want. Um, granted, I have no idea what you would use this system for in uh, Factorio. So that's cell block 5, and this is cell block 4. Yeah, um, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free ah, feel free to ask me, and I will do the best of my ability to answer you. Um, yeah, have a good day.